think the most surprising thing has been the speed with which uh, technology is being adopted and how you can be left um, in the dust if you haven't moved on very quickly. It's instant, instant death. <laughs> One connotation of the word fashion is this idea of renewal. You know, things are in fashion, things are out of fashion. For me, uh, technology really facilitates this. I feel like we're going through a tremendous turnaround from humans being kind of asleep to being awake. We are super lucky to be, to take part of this and explore the unknown. Well, I think that the, the fashion industry is uh, embracing technology today, but in 2000 when I was going around talking about um, selling clothes online, it was a really different time and even the consumer didn't even know that they wanted that yet. At that time it was kind of the old school way of working where it was like, you know, the photographers were shooting film and shooting Polaroid. The clients didn't want anybody to know like who they were shooting for their campaign. When we started out in fashion, it was definitely a different time because it was still very much the old school days. You know, you would send out paper invites, they would show up and it would be a very exclusive experience, so very elite when you think about it. And then you might have pictures of it and then the rest would be history and word of mouth. And now like everything's completely changed where sometimes you're on set and it's literally like everybody's Instagramming, everybody's tweeting, there's paparazzi there, there's, you know, and it's almost like the the photo shoot itself becomes like a media event. I mean, to the new model that just started today, I will tell them, like, get a Twitter account, Instagram, get everything in your name and just start talking about what you do. I started 10 years ago. A model didn't have a voice. The biggest barrier wasn't so much um, the fact that I had to convince anyone about technology. I think people were excited at the time. It was more about brand and about protecting brand value and prestige and that feeling of luxury. I think they were very worried that uh, something which was so um, accessible to the masses wasn't necessarily inherently designed in a beautiful way. It's sort of this oversimplification that a computer is just a tool. It's just a means to an end rather than an opportunity to be the end itself. You know, you could say the camera is just a tool, but photography has done brilliant things for fashion. Collaborating with, you know, a digital company could be, you know, as fruitful as collaborating with a photographer in terms of executing beautiful work. E-commerce has also become this great vehicle for up-and-coming brands that perhaps lack the financial backing to become highly visible or to get into physical stores. Brands like Nasty Gal are very inspiring because it shows the power of a vertically integrated brand. Sophia started Nasty Gal with an eBay account and now has migrated that into a brand very successfully. On the MFA here at Parsons, I built into the curriculum the idea of researching into different types of technology and it helps them take control of their own identity and what they're trying to communicate and I think that's been really important. We felt that 3D printing could do something that was not possible before. Our interest was that you're able to create a structural weave that can create a shape or you can create a flexible weave that can move in certain ways that was impossible before. This dress is a 3D printing dress. It's made of nylon 9. It definitely doesn't bend like a fabric does. When 3D printing is being able to print wool and cotton and leather and natural fibers, then we are talking. One day, if we could actually make wearable clothes from 3D printing, it will change the way we buy things. We could actually make it to our bodies instead of being like, I'm a size zero, two, four, six. You, in fact, could make a dress that is to your body. Can you order something online and then print it out and, and where can that go? You know, the speed at which technology is going, like how many more years will it be before we can print out a T-shirt or something very simple. 
I'm very excited about wearable tech. I, I'm really hoping that some, some cool things come out over the next few years. I think it's important that it's not just gimmicky, but actually useful for, for our lives. Like what if you could put your phone in your pocket and the pants is just getting the kinetic energy you just get from walking and it charges your phone while the phone's in your pocket. The one piece that you never take off that cleans itself basically, you know, that you can wear in any climate. Some like really beautiful little slip dress from Valentino will be built in with some kind of warming up mechanism so that when I don't want to wear a coat to a party, I can um, still be warm. When it comes down to it, the ultimate end user for any of these are human beings. I think in terms of catwalk shows and, and um, live streaming or seeing things on the internet, I think you need to pull your audience in and, and, and give them an experience. Next on the runways will be performances in that we mix tech, fashion, and music, and dance. Well, I just did this performance wearing gel dresses. I was dancing with a hologram of myself. So instead of just a runway, now you had this performance with tech, with fashion, with music, and people were just mesmerized by it. A fashion show can really be more of an immersive experience that, that invites regular people to the show, not only celebrities to the front row. Even 10 years ago, nobody would have been able to grasp, you know, that this would be reality now. Everything that's happening is happening so fast. It's kind of mind-blowing.